Here's David Smoke and Paul Catalina. All right, he's ESPN college football reporter, senior editor at one point as well, and now has been a part of college football for a long time. Dave Wilson and I used to be in the same... Dave, was it press box or was it like press row at a junior college basketball game? It was press row or a little little folding table there we had set up. Yeah, at uh, probably Masters Gymnasium or Tyler Junior College or wherever it, it might uh, might have been. Hey, what's your yeah. take on uh, what you've seen these these last three weeks? Uh, the the importance of what college football is, the fan bases that are excited, some that are like whoa, and then there's other in between that hey we're fine. What are your thoughts about what we've seen, the shift in the landscape of college football with Texas and Oklahoma? I think we've seen some sort of tears in the fabric of college football over the past, you know, 10 years, you start to see the haves and the have nots. You start to see the, the exorbitant salaries and the, you know, the arms race and sort of off field staffing, uh, that's taken place. And, and it seemed like it's a matter of time before, you know, something happens to where there's, there's a clear delineation between the teams that can afford to do it on the top level and the teams who can't. And, and I, I know I've wondered, you know, for a while, um, when is that going to break? To me, this was the start of that. Um, I know Mac Brown said it on Feinbaum yesterday that, you know, he thinks this is the beginning of the mega conference era that we've, we've talked about for years, but that to me is what we're seeing. We're going to start seeing the, you know, the people lining up to, to sort of get on the life rafts of, uh, uh, where the, where the money and the games are. So, Dave, how many schools could really afford to do this, realistically? Um, you know, that's a good question, but I don't think it's—I don't think it's a whole bunch. That you know, I think there's probably 30, uh, 30 schools. You know, that's that's just off the top of my head. That that sort of play at this level with this these giant budgets and and the exorbitant salaries and and all the off-field stuff. I, I mean, you know, I think in any given year, there's probably seven or eight teams that realistically have a chance to win a, a national championship in some years, it feels like there's four. Um, and so it, it's kind of sad, you know, I, I talked about the, I've talked about this at work, you know, I feel like, uh, like you said, I mean, we, we knew each other when I was from a town of 11,000 people in East Texas, um, you know, and, and you look at all these towns and all these places where they've lived and breathed college football for years. And basically, you know, places like Ames or Manhattan, Kansas, and and uh, it's like their big thing, and they're basically told you don't you don't matter anymore. And that's a really tough thing for me for what we love about college football. Yeah, it it uh, it doesn't matter though, does it? It it really doesn't because of what it appears. And, and then there, those who are included are like, why are you whining? And then, but most of the teams who are not included is the larger number, correct? Correct. Yes. So, I mean, I don't know how we solve that. You know, I don't know, um, uh, how that, how that eventually settles because it feels like there should be a, it feels like there should be a, from, for my purposes, if that's the way it's going to be, there should be a premier league and there should be a, a middle class or something where everyone has a shot at winning their respective championship. Dave Wilson, ESPN.com with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. So, Dave, how, the should, how do you think the Big 12 will ultimately react to this uh, in the end game? Um, you know, that's obviously the, well, I don't even know if it's a million-dollar question. It's a multiple, multi-million-dollar question. But, you know, I think there's a, you know, these eight teams that are twisting right now have, you know, to me, they're, they have every right to sort of hold tight and try to claim every dollar that that they're entitled to, um, and uh, and you know wait this out. Uh, it's an uncomfortable position because you may feel like you're just kind of stuck in neutral. But I think the guaranteed payday um, is is too much to sort of overlook right now. And you, and you're looking at places like Texas Tech where they just you know um, hired you know they just promoted a basketball coach. They just paid their baseball coach a bunch of money and, and even away from football, there's so many things that are in these athletic departments that are counting on that revenue that, you know, all of a sudden if you, if you lose $25 million a year, what happens to your athletic department? So I think, um, I feel like that the, the, 
the current status of the four years of limbo um, at least gives people time to sort of figure that out. I, I, I'm like anybody else. I have no idea. I have, I have a hard time seeing it truly last four years. Like if you remember the last couple of years of the Southwest Conference, it was really, really awkward. Um, but, you know, if I'm those guys, I hold on to every dime I can. You were at Big 12 Media Days, and we were there. We saw you there. And Bob Bowlesby walks around, does interviews, did one with us. And, you know, he's part of that college football expansion. And everything was still like hunky-dory, right? How embarrassed right. do you think – How em, first of all, blindsided, whatever word, and if you're a Texas and Oklahoma fan or whatever, you don't care. You're trying to do what's best for you. But how amazing was that, Dave, that he truly had no clue? You know, the one thing that struck me is he's the guy that brought up the expansion angle himself. And, you know, he said, I'm surprised I haven't been asked about expansion. And he brought it up and said, uh, you know, that that – footprints don't matter anymore in a streaming world. And, and, you know, part of me is like, well, did he bring that up to sort of head this off? I don't think so. I mean, and it's a hard thing to look at, you know, if you, it, the big 12 has teetered for so long, it teetered from the very beginning. Um, and how you get in, how you get caught flat footed like this, it's a tough thing. If, if, if you're one of those eight schools, you know, you have to be looking at balls be like, you know, uh, why are we sitting here in this position right now? You know, Dave, I, I, I feel bad for him and don't at the same time because, one, I mean, this was done in the dark. I mean, I think less than 10 people knew about this because if it, more than that, then it would have gotten out and maybe he could have headed it off the pass. But also, like, isn't his job going to be easier without Texas and Oklahoma throwing gunk in the works if they do somehow stay together? Yeah, I don't know if his job is easier without the two most prominent properties that the league has. You know what I mean? I, I think it's, um, um, I, you know, on a, I feel empathy with anyone in a position like that, for sure. But I do think, you know, we've all, as we said, we've all been seeing this coming for a while, that college football is pulling apart. And it's hard. When, when you look at the numbers, uh, the TV numbers or the attendance numbers for the, for the other eight, um, you know, that they're right on par with the American. And so that's a hard sell uh, to anybody to sort of like, if you wanted to go out and try to poach a couple of power five teams, it's going to be a tough sell. And, and again, like I said, I, I love all the, I love college football as a whole. So I'm not, I, you know, I feel bad for a school like TCU that completely fought back from the margins to get back on the stage. And then basically they get left behind again. And it's because of, you know, they're a private school that graduates, whatever, 1,500 people a year, uh, similar to Baylor. <clears throat> Those are, um, you know, that's a tough thing. It's sort of like you're just grandfathered into this position based on, you know, who you've always been. If you are one of those 